Last week we got the Awakened King DLC for Remnant 2. Overall, it was a pretty good experience. Well, at least after the first patch. The Forgotten guys were, uh, pretty bad on day one. Like, if you only had around 40-something percent DR, their projectile attack would pretty much one-shot you on Apocalypse. But on to the main topic. Should you buy this DLC? Well, as it turns out, you can actually still play the content of the DLC, even if you don't own it. You just can't use any of the equipment you find in the DLC, which is kind of half the fun of it. I'm also doing this video without a script, just trying to see if this can help speed up the process of making videos. It's not going to be an every video type of thing. This is a topic that I want to get out as soon as possible. With that out of the way, let's get into it. For the price of $10, this is what you get. A new loathsome storyline, three new bosses, three new guns, three slash four new melee weapons. I'm not sure if non-DLC owners can buy the Steel Scythe. Two new armor sets, a boatload of new trinkets, one new non-archetype trait, and of course, the new archetype, Ritualist. I'm not gonna go into super detail about the trinkets or weapons of the DLC. Those will all get their own videos eventually. Let's start from the top. The Awakening King story is pretty fun. It took me a couple hours to complete it, mainly I was doing as much side content or exploring as possible, but if you were to just beeline it until the end of the entire thing, you could probably beat the DLC in about a few hours. If you're going in blind and doing as much exploring as possible, it might take you a bit longer. And if you're trying to get literally everything, as I was trying to, it's gonna take you a long time. Especially if you don't have access to tools like console commands or save loaders. There's a lot in this DLC that requires you to basically replay the entire thing. Minor spoilers right here for one of the characters you meet. Timestamp if you want to skip by this segment. Laywise, basically, you end up having to find a book for him, and the book, you can inspect it and open it up to find a little medallion. You basically bring it back to him, and there's several things you can do with it. You can either give the book back as is, you can open up and give him the medallion right away, you can attempt to give him the book slash medallion and then not actually give it back to him at first. And then the medallion itself can be used to unlock a chamber at the final boss's area. That's four times you would have to play through, at least up to getting the book. Now, for an average player who isn't going to get everything, this is completely fine. But if you want to get everything this guy has, and you don't have the tools like I mentioned, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare. I mean, you can always plan the lower difficulties to make it a chore more than an actual challenge to get everything, but, you know, the point still stands. And for some people, this is great. You know, you're finding a bunch of secrets, you feel like you're accomplishing something, like, oh, I wonder what happens if I do this instead. But, you know, for some players who are just trying to get everything, it can be a bit of a hassle. Either way, I still enjoyed getting everything. The dialogue is great, as always. You know, funny little quips here and there. I think in terms of story and lore additions, uh, it's great. If you're already kind of invested before, there's a lot more now to discover about new characters and pre-existing ones. I'm not going to go into any sort of spoilers here. I think it's really worthwhile to go find it yourself in the side areas and revisiting certain things. You're definitely not going to get everything on your first try. That's just the nature of it, especially with some of the more secretive stuff. The pre-existing one-shot that you can play through is really good because it's tailored pretty much to how they kind of envisioned you experiencing the DLC. But if you want to get certain things, you definitely have to re-roll it and then, you know, maybe just do some adventures. There's a lot of stuff to find. As far as bosses go, I really enjoyed them. At least the last two that you end up fighting. The first witch anchor lady, she was a bit of a, I don't want to say letdown, she wasn't as interesting as I was hoping she would be. When I first encountered the new elite enemies, the Anchor Witch and the Spear Guy, I was not sure if they were going to base bosses off of them. Uh, I thought they were pretty cool additions. They definitely have their own little movesets. The reason I bring them up is because in the Witch's case, her moveset wasn't too radically different from her elite variation. Meanwhile, Bruin, the spear boss, was way, way different, and because of that was way more enjoyable. He is definitely a fight I will be going back to during my Apocalypse Tested videos. The one true king fight I thought was really, really fun. The music is great during it, his dialogue and general character is pretty cool, the rewards you get from it are pretty nice, and I was pretty happy to see the conclusion to Losom as a world. 
If the other two DLCs follow Yesha and Narud in a similar fashion, I'd be pretty satisfied. Maybe they could sneak in a new game mode or something here or there to spice up the regular gameplay. As for the new guns and melee weapons, I think they're all pretty cool. I haven't used them all extensively, besides one. I think most of them add something that wasn't there before. Some of them need to maybe be tweaked up or buffed a little bit. Besides that, I think they all have really good potential, and one of them is definitely my new favorite weapon. Both new armor sets are really nice looking. I'm not going to show off the second one here because it's kind of a secret, but trust me, it's very drippy. Now for the trinkets. There's a lot of them. I think some of the additions are just base game now. Like, I don't think you have to own the DLC to get some of them. The wiki just lists them as random drops in the pre-existing worlds. But as far as the ones that are restricted to the DLC, there are some really good new ones. Definitely some good additions that enable some new playstyles, add on to existing ones, or maybe just add new quality of life or small tweaks that you otherwise wouldn't have had in the base game. I definitely will be using them in the new Apocalypse Sesley videos. There's just so many fun new ones. Definitely glad I held off on doing the rest of the vanilla weapons. The new trait is interesting. It's not something I think I will grab often. I understand the concept of it, but I'm not sure it really needs to be the way it is. I think they should probably either rework it or maybe make it some sort of toggleable thing that doesn't cost any trade points. I like what it can enable on specific niche builds, but it definitely is not something that should take 10 points to invest into. I just think it needs a bit of a tweak is all. A ritualist, the new archetype is very, very fun. It does currently have some bugs, specifically regarding affliction, but once everything is ironed out, I think it's going to be a fan favorite archetype. Absolutely one I am excited to incorporate in the future of my Apocalypse Tested videos. So should you pick up this DLC? Well, if you really liked the base game of Remnant 2, definitely. It adds hours of new content, way more new playstyles that are enabled by the trinkets and the new archetype and weapons, and the new mutators that I definitely did not forget to mention. Basically, if you loved the base game, then sure, pick it up. If you're still skeptical, you could always just wait for a sale. Personally, though, I enjoyed it and I think it is worth the $10. Something I definitely would have done differently if I were the devs is I like the concept of the one-shot. I think it's really, really good because it can basically have all of the content, or most of it, that you want the player to experience in one nicely wrapped package. I do kind of think, however, that the player should have the option of replaying through the presumably seeded experience again should they want to. I know there's a lot of stuff that requires you to be experiencing the new story with some of the older content, but I just think it would be kind of nice to have the option of just replaying through that vision again. I know on PC you can like erase your world save or change saves to kind of replay through it that way, but I think there should definitely be just a base game way of doing it. But yeah, DLC is pretty fun. And that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this sort of unscripted style wasn't too off from what I normally do. It was definitely a big time saver for me trying to just get my thoughts and mind into one video quicker. Definitely still going to be doing scripts for the Apocalypse Tested series, which should be coming back very soon thanks to this DLC. I also want to give a big shout out to you guys for the support on the last two videos. All of you are amazing. I definitely would not be making these videos if you all weren't watching and leaving very nice comments. And yeah, that's it. I will see you all in the next one.